right, let's call the meeting to order. This meeting uh, is being recorded. Katie is not being not able to join us tonight, so she's going to take minutes from the recording. Okay. Okay. Um, is there public comment for items not on the agenda? Any um, addition? Any additions or changes to the agenda? I don't have any additions or changes, but I. When we get to the point in the meeting of uh, new business, I do have something to bring up. Okay. Yes, all right. I, do we want to take any time to talk about Collar Hill at all or just? Uh... Not tonight. We don't really have time. That's fine. We'll do another. That's good. Oh, there goes Toby again. Just when we need him. Hmm. <clears throat> so um, last year, we applied for two grants and didn't receive them. They're listed on the agenda. This is the section off of Route 14 that's paved on Lightning Ridge to the school. Yeah. And they wanted to repave that and then to resize a culvert on Loose Road um, from 48 to 66 inches. And we, like I said, we applied for both last year and didn't receive them. So this is what Toby is asking us to sign off on again this year. So nothing is really, nothing is new except for Rick wasn't on the board then, but mm -hmm. it's, just, it's the same project. Sure. We'll pull the, we'll pull um, the Lightning Ridge Road application up first. And Toby's trying to come back in now. Okay. And there he is. Hopefully he'll stay connected. So this is the Lightning Ridge Road application. And if you want to ask Toby some questions, he might be on for a few. He could answer them. Um, hey, Toby. Yeah, I'm, I'm back. I had a little computer problem. Yeah, I was just <laughs> giving the reminding the board that these were two grants that we applied for last year that we didn't receive. I don't remember why we didn't receive them. Well, because they didn't give out any grants last year. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Is there, Toby, is there anything in particular that we should be aware of or concerned about with either of these projects or the grants? Um, no, uh, one is a repaving of a section of pavement by the school and the other one is replacing a culvert that has some trouble. So it, is it just on the, um, is it basically from 14 up to where it turns to stone? Is that whole that's, section? that's correct. Yeah, okay, yeah. When was the last time we did that, Toby? No idea. I know it's been, it must have been a long time. I think it was Cy Lamberton was the last one who wrote a grant for it. Yeah, okay. Wow. I was gonna say it's been a while. That's a that's a pretty good life for a piece of pavement. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so what we're looking to do is to okay. um approve applying for these grants. I make a motion that we approve um the operations manager reapplying for the class two repaving a uh, section route fourteen from 14 to the school and the culvert grant for loose and the culvert uh, for loose road. I'll second. Okay, is there any further discussion? No. All right, are you ready to vote? Right, can I ask Toby a quick question on that one? I was just yeah, go ahead. upsizing. Is that part of the, I mean, the upsizing on that? Is, is that something that, uh, is that undersized? I, I just don't know the history on it. Yeah, it's, it's too small. Um, most of the large culverts in town are way smaller than they need to be. And with the new um, uh, storm cycle that we get, um, the hydraulics are actually asking us to put much larger culverts in. Yeah, okay, now that's fine. Right, yeah, and, and we do, uh, and state grants require hydrology study. So essentially the, the state agency of natural resources actually gives us a number of what size the hole should be. Yeah, do they do they do those natural bottom too, or are they just uh, for passage or anything, or do they? I'm do they... sorry, I didn't understand your question. It's do hard to hear, that? Rick. It's really hard to hear you for some reason. Is this better? Is that better? That is. That's better. I'm just. Are they are they doing those with like natural bottoms in them, or are they? Uh, 
just great? Um, it depends on the stream and whether there's, I mean, a lot of times we do have to put stone fill in the bottom of the culverts. Yeah, okay. I just curious. I didn't know whether there were fish, uh, if there were fish habitat issues with that stream or along there or not. Well, that, that's part of the hydraulic study. So essentially the state tells us how big the hole is and what the condition of the bottom of the culvert needs to be depending on the stream. Got you. Okay. I do. I have a couple questions, Toby. Um, so I or Alfred, either one. I assume that the paving thing, the paving project, we would hire, we would hire out, and the culvert project is that one that the crew will do, or are we hiring that out? No, well, we'd we'd hire that out as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready to vote? Yeah. All right, Cliff. Aye. I'm an I, Rick. Aye. Sharon. Aye. All right. Thank you, Toby, for doing for doing this again. Yeah. Thanks, Alfred and Toby, putting that together. All right. Next um, is Miguel Graham for cut. Thank you, Gail, for resending the application. This is the one we talked about at our last meeting and. It was noted as agricultural and we confirmed that it was really residential. So we just asked Gail to send in a revised application. Nothing else has changed. Um, Alfred, you've reviewed, as you said before, the site and you don't have any concerns with um, site distance or anything like that. Right, right. We're and just rec recommending a culvert inside the, out of the right of way. What size culvert? F 15 inch. Mm -hmm. Okay, I recommend a 15 inch culvert outside. What did you say? Outside the right of way? Outside the right of way, yeah. Okay, and you've talked to Gail about that? Yes. Okay, Gail, are you good with doing that? Yes, yes. Okay. Is, that, is that ditch line right outside of that right away on that, or does it run like, or does it divert out there? There's there's a culvert, a cross culvert above their driveway. Oh, I got you. So we don't need a culvert at the driveway. Just just it's going to come out of the off of the road above their driveway, and it's just going to create problems uh, for their driveway if they don't put a culvert in. Oh yeah, no question. But, yeah. But their culvert will be outside of the right way, so that's why it's just a recommendation. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Okay. Is there any anything else with this? I think we we basically just wanted the correct paperwork. So the number the number on it didn't change. It just says revised, and there was no ad additional filing fee. So I would make a motion to approve the curb cut with the recommended 15 inch culvert outside the right of way, which um, Gail Graham has agreed to do. Anything okay. else on, we should have on the motion? All right, looking for a second. I'll second. All right, any further discussion or questions? All right, you're ready to vote. Cliff? Aye. I'm an aye. Rick? Aye. And Sharon? Aye. All righty, very good. All right, um, no, Toby, Alfred, anything else really quick that you need to update um, us yeah. on? What's the status yeah. of the chipper? It's dead. dead. It's, it's dead. <laughs> well, I'm sure of it. Well, then it needs to be re, re, live, re alived because um, we need it and the voters voted it and we need to pursue it. And I don't know, are you asking us to pursue it or are you guys gonna do it like you did before? But we do need a chipper and we need it as soon as possible. Can, well, I, right now John is got dealing with a bunch of family personal issues. So he's not available. And I don't know when he will be. Would you be willing to check in on it and see what you can find? Well, we certainly will. We just needed some direction from you because you took it and ran with it the last time and we were not involved. And 
<clears throat> I guess it's we should be looking for something up to twenty five thousand dollars. Yeah, you guys, I think that's smart. You guys are going to be more familiar with that equipment, particularly Alfred. You know, with what you know, the something that's used. So I think that should probably, if you can lead on that, that's great. It's yeah, a, and also, you know, awesome. don't don't forget to look for some decent used one, and well, don't yeah. forget. Oh. We're not going to get a new. We're not going to get a new one for twenty five thousand. But no, we'll definitely not. Okay, we will, you know, and there's... don't don't forget to come back to us with you know what we're going to ask you for questions about the chipper. Right, you know, does the, it have the, fresh paint on it? Right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what's and what's what's happening with the looking for a um, used truck? Have you had anything, Alfred? Any bites? Uh, uh, there's two trucks that are available. Uh, that were taken in trade, but they won't be available until later in the season. Uh, they're being traded in from other towns to Charlie Boys, uh, one of which I really like the looks of and the specs that it has, um, but it's it's not going to be available until like in September, like in the fall. Can you handle the weight for it? Is it someone that's in good shape or is that um well i think i yes i can show interest but uh you know i i don't know what how to go about about it I and mean, it's not available mm -hmm. until until the town gets their new one right well, they, well when when you're talking with them don't forget to say that you know you got to have some lead time because the select board has to approve the expenditure so let right. me make let me make a suggestion. Um, let's talk to Charlie Boyce and find out what we would be making the deal for in September. We will get you all the specifications of the truck, and we will present it to you well in advance. And we'll put some money down to hold it because the last time we found a truck we really wanted, yeah, uh, it disappeared under our under our watch. And we yeah. we need to be proactive on this. And I'm sure we can work with. Sandy at Charlie Boyce to figure out, you know, when it arrives, as long as it passes a few tests and it's, it, it hasn't gotten 10, 100,000 miles since the time we looked at it, then I think it's a reasonable, um, a reasonable approach. So, so Toby, can I just repeat what I think you said and make sure that I understood you, stood you correctly? So you're going to bring back to us the, the specs, that's the word you said, right? Right. for what for what you're looking for and ask us to improve approve specs um within i'm assuming a budget and then and then the only other thing i would ask you maybe to add to that is a little bit about what your due diligence process will be you know how are you going to kick the tires and look under the hood or how are you going to you know what's the shopping around sort of thing well, that would be going to the town that it came from and talking to the people that drove it and maintained yeah. it. And that's that's great. Just yeah. to have that as part of the package proposal. Okay, guys, here's our proposal. Here's how we're going to know we got a good deal. Here's how. Here's what we think we need. Here's what we think the budget is. Please bless us in advance so that when we find it, we can. Right. That's what you're saying. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah. Is yeah. this on a, Is this just a general yeah. approval, or I thought you were talking about perhaps there's a specific truck that you're looking, you're thinking uh, about. No, that no this be... would this would be a specific truck that we have identified okay. that, would, that, that may oh. or may not be available till September. Okay. Right. And we would have to put some financing down in order to in order to guarantee that that truck, when it came in for. Um, trade-in would be available to us and we could move on it immediately. So okay, that's, we, what I, that's what I okay. thought you were saying. Yeah. All right, I misunderstood. So there is actually like a gray truck in some other town that you know exactly which one you want. That's correct. Okay. Maybe it's red, okay. Yeah, Maybe and we, we would also want to make sure that if we decide we don't want to buy it, can we get our deposit back? Um, we'll, I'll let you know as soon as we yeah. talk to Charlie Boyce about what they're willing to do. Okay. Good. Do you, All right. You do need to. Right. I mean, if you know, assuming they come up with you know, some reasonable response on that, I mean, do you need us to do an approval for now, or, or do you, can we well wait till? No. Let time? let us talk. Let us talk to them first, and then we'll come okay. back to you with the proposal how we want to structure it. I just wanted to 
make you guys aware that we need to do this a little bit differently than just going and finding a truck sitting somewhere that's available. Yeah, this is smart. <laughs> and then having to wait for a decision. Right. That's what's, that's what's happened to us in the past. Right. Find a, find a truck that we love and that fits our bill. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have to wait for a decision and we lose the truck. Yeah. So yeah. With this yeah. lead time, with this lead time, I will go get the information that you're looking for. And at that point, you can give me a yay or nay so that when the time comes in September or October, whenever it is, um, I can just purchase it when it's when it's available. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for getting the ducks in the row. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. New, new topic. Um, and maybe I should have said I want to add this, but it only occurs to me as I'm listening to Toby and Alfred. Um, Alfred, especially. So my daffodils are almost in full bloom, which is a two, if not three week, um, more, more uh, three weeks earlier, two or three weeks earlier than usual. And which, and we've heard from Peter about his, you know, thoughts about invasives. So um, it is not too early to be thinking about roadside, roadside mowing. The chippers always make me think about mowers. For some reason so so i just want to put that that plant in your brain to let's make sure we have a schedule to get in ahead of the invasives you know all the stuff we talk about but i feel like we're always talking about it like the chervil's up the chervil's up it's going nuts on lightning ridge so like you know i denise maybe we want to hear Maybe I don't. This is this is. I put this down as an agenda item for the twenty sixth. Okay. So and so, Alfred. In case, in case that having a schedule and talking about it and being on top of it wasn't on your radar, then it, it isn't too soon. Thank you, Denise. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that's why I put it on. Um. So with with that, um, I know that we've got money in the budget for a fifth employee. Is that something that we should be trying to think about? Um, given that won't, that won't kick in until July 1st, Alfred. Well, that's but fine. Th there's no, but there's no reason to not start thinking about it, yes. Right, I'm just thinking that, you know, with mowing, it takes, takes a man away from the rest of my activities. So right. if that is gonna take place, then we should, Start thinking about that now because July is not all that far away. Oh uh, yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> I hope it uh, is. I hope well, it is. Well, in the process of finding an employee, it's not very far. It's not very much time. Yeah. So, so Alfred, another way to think about it is that um, filling potholes takes away from invasives mowing. Uh, okay, well, where's your priority, Sharon? Where's, do you want potholes or do you want um, to try to slow <laughs> down the invasives? I, I mean, I can park what, the graders. Would, I can park both graders for all summer and and just focus on roadside mowing. I can do that. The, the, what we've been saying for a couple of years or four, because I've been on the board for four years, is that it, it's really all of these things. And we got to find, I mean, the invasives, the invasives are very time sensitive. And that's, right. I think, what we continue to underestimate is the time sensitivity, sensitivity of getting that done. I understand that, that potholes also need to be filled. But yeah. when, when, when the chervil is starting to come up and the wild parsnip, I would prioritize that. That's me. Yeah. That's well, my that, opinion. That's, that's just my opinion. Right. Well, this year we're going to be much further ahead on the pothole filling uh, than typical years because of the dry weather. I mean, we are never this far ahead. Yeah, in, in what are, are we about two, two two to three weeks ahead, Alfred? At least, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's just never this early, so we yeah. are further ahead. Uh, well, as the process. Well, as the manager of the road crew, I would say you know come up with a plan. Yeah, well, that's this is part of my plan is yeah. talking about whether I'm going to have enough help this summer or not. And well, I like I said, yeah, we put the we put the money in the budget, but the money isn't there to spend until July 1st. But there's no reason you can't start thinking about it. Okay, 
that's, and putting it into the, your and putting it into your plan on how you plan to manage the crew and get everything done that needs to be done and right well that's that's the answer i was looking for just and, yeah, like, and make everybody I, happy I right uh, you're you never going to make everybody happy trust me no and you know well, we're not i don't know about right. you guys but i'm not getting any complaints about the road i i'm just i think we're making people happy yeah the, well i think the important thing in this is we're not going to get all the way this year too i mean it, I, if you're, we're familiar with when the mowing has to happen, and Sharon's absolutely right with these invasives. You know, there's certain time windows. Rick, you gotta you gotta lean in or something. We can't hear there's you. There's certain time windows that you have to get with these invasives. Sharon's right with that. So, I mean, we may not be able to get it all exactly right this year, but if we can start scheduling this in a way so that we can at least get start getting ahead of this at the right time, then. Yeah, that's yeah. Great. And there, you know, we probably won't be able to get it all, obviously, you know, but if we got. So, Rick, just so you know, we've been trying to get into some kind of a schedule and rhythm for the last couple of years. So we've been working on it. So, yeah, it sounds yeah like we're, it. we're on it. But this really wasn't a topic for discussion tonight. Okay. And if we're going to and if we're going to pay attention to wanting to keep on track here, we've got um, we've got a, a couple of minutes, but. Yeah. Try to but I'm good. I just wanted to make sure that Alfred's got that on his on his mind before the turbo starts to wave at us. And Gail, you had a comment? Yeah, I just want to say that uh, I want to compliment the group because uh, last Friday I drove the West County Road up to um, Woodbury and I, there was a noticeable difference between how well the uh, callous part was and I got to Woodbury. I just wanted to add that. Thank you, Gail. That's very nice. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, it's a nice, nice work I've seen so far too. Yeah. Alfred, it's nice on the grading and everything. It's and Alfred, I have not, good. I haven't really received complaints. Um, I think there was a couple of things on front porch form, but they didn't seem to be that significant. So yeah. thank you to you and the crew for staying on top of things. Yeah, you're welcome. So I have one more thing before you move on to uh, other agenda items. And it's just, it should be a simple question, simple thing. Um, as you guys, you may know that the Memorial Hall is starting, they're starting work on that. And so I've got a phone call from the contractor that wants to come in and work on lifting the building and doing his jacking, whatever he's doing, he's gonna be bringing heavy equipment in. So I told him that if he could wait until next week, that would be great. Um, just because of the conditions of our roads, it'll be, I'll be able to lift the poster signs and it won't be causing damage. However, in that process, I went and looked at GAR road and because of it was muddy and people went through it, it's pretty ruddy now. And so I'm wondering, is it okay if I can put, can I put some gravel and fix that road up a little bit for the contractor and for other people that are gonna be traveling? I think that history has shown that the road crew has historically done some maintenance on that as a fourth class road, just like sometimes there's maintenance done on other fourth class roads, you know, Apple Hill comes to mind. Yeah. Um, so as long as we're just, my opinion would be as long as we're just doing what we usually do for that road or any other fourth class road. Yeah. Um, well, I don't mean to go crazy. I just, there's a couple spots that were very ruddy and a little bit of gravel and run the grader over it um, will make it, make it a lot better. I mean, there, this, this contractor is going to be bringing in heavy trucks. Yeah. And it's just going to make it worse if we don't give it something yeah. solid to stand on. Yeah, some structure a little bit. I mean, I guess, you know, it's within your discretion as the manager to decide what needs to be done. Just, you know, like I said, historically, yeah. um, we have done some maintenance on there occasionally. Yeah. That's the, that, that, I think it's they're using it from the boat landing side back. Uh, I'm not exactly sure which way they'll come in. Um, it's certainly shorter and straighter from the fishing access side. 
Right. Yeah. Um, but both sides, both, I mean, all the way around that road is pretty, pretty ruddy and pretty rough. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I know it is. It's not much. Of a, it's so a definite class four. I just don't want, you know, I'm just trying to avoid a big mess. So yeah. um, <laughs> I will, I will use my judgment on how much work I do to it. Yeah, just, you know, I mean, we typically, like I said, have done work on some fourth class roads. So keeping with that same um, yeah. way we do things. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Alfred and Toby. Have a good thank evening. You. Okay. See you. you as well. Thanks, guys. Yep. Take Bye care. Now. Thanks, guys. Good night. Good night. All right. Judy, you're up. Yeah. Thank you so much for all your work on helping us to be able to um, figure out a timeline for your departure. Um, again, you know, you've been awesome to work with and really appreciate the team effort, even though, you know, it's, you're individually elected um, as are the rest of us, but it's really makes it a nice, better working relationship to have somebody like you in the office. So thank you. Thank you. So tonight we have to, um, Judy sent us a letter, it's dated March 22nd, assume it's in the folder, Cliff. It, it is. is in the folder. Would you like me to pull it up on screen? Sure. Okay, while I'm doing that, I would like to make a motion that we not accept Judy's letter of resignation. <laughs> I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a moment to pull it up. Okay. While you're pulling it up, I'm going to go get my water. Okay. Um, what we can do when it gets pulled up is go through the timeline that Judy created. And Jim has looked at the timeline, so I think it's good. Okay, hopefully everyone can see that now. Uh, I believe the board has had a chance to read that, so I'll scroll down to the timeline. Judy, does it feel surreal that tonight's the night? This thing you've been thinking about and planning and talking about? I think it will feel more surreal like around June 30th. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're going to keep you busy until then. Right. And the fact that we don't have an heir apparent makes it seem a little abstract at this point. Yeah, I'm sure. Have we ever not had, has there ever been a time where somebody where there wasn't a candidate for town clerk. Well, Eva worked for 48 years. So we're relatively new at this, <laughs> yeah. aren't we? <laughs> and Donna wanted that job. Boy, did Donna want that job. And she waited five years and did all kinds of other jobs before she got it. And, um, and I kind of fell into it, actually, as an assistant town clerk. And um, so this is the first time, at least in, you know, in recent history in like 55 60 years 60 years or something i don't know how eva i know when eva first started um it was actually david morse and she did all the work but they didn't want a woman doing it so <laughs> they finally got their arms twisted and elected eva because she was actually doing the work yeah <laughs> okay so let's run through the timeline um and tonight we're going to need to accept um Judy's resignation and the terms in there that she refers to with regards to pay and benefits. Um, and then we're going to need to do um, appoint an interim town clerk and approve a special meeting warning. So thank you, Judy, for getting everything ready for us. Yep. So um, we need to all right, does anybody have any questions on Judy's memo or timeline? No. Okay, hearing none. So I would make a motion then to accept and approve Judy's memo of March 22nd and with the conditions that she put in the letter of, um, oh, where is in her letter? Um, I think it's number second three. paragraph. It is, 
Yeah. Okay. She oh that you receive the same pain benefits from now until the end of June or whenever this or whenever we get a new town clerk. No, it'd be June. It would be June thirtieth because as of July first, I'm no longer right. Right. Yeah. Oh, well, I, this is yeah. Okay, so through and including June thirtieth. Is there a second? Five second. Any further discussion or questions, board members? Judy? Uh, um, comments? Just, oh, go ahead, Cliff. Just want to um, thank Judy for uh, being willing to work with us on this and uh, definitely going above and beyond uh, in terms of flexibility and uh, just all the more reason why we will miss you, Judy. Yes. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Judy. Yeah, thank you. And and um, being that whoever this new mystery person is will probably not have a great deal of experience, I will be available in the rest, you know, July to do training. Okay, great. Thank you again. Thank you. Helping us make, helping the town make this a smooth transition is really important. Yep. Thank you, Judy. I do have, I just want to, I think, underscore that we, so... Judy, Judy is gonna, or is resigning tonight. We accept the resignation tonight, which we're not doing now. We're just talking about it. And no, I then, made a motion. I made then, a motion. Oh, you did, right, right. We're so we're in the, that, we're in the middle. Well, we haven't, we haven't, we haven't voted yet. So then we have 10 days to notify the public of the vacancy. Um, yeah, we have a sample notice, which we'll get to. Okay. I was going to say, what does that look yeah. like? Well, I guess yeah. it looks like, you know, announcing it to the world and putting on Facebook and whatever. Okay. Right. Okay. So are you ready to vote on the motion? Yeah. Okay. Um, Cliff? Aye. I'm an aye with deep sorrow Thank to you. see you leave. Thank you. Cliff, yeah. I mean, Rick? Aye. And Sharon? Aye. Okay, we have a draft notice of vacancy. Um, Cliff, can you call that up? Yeah, let me see if I can. I did not see that in the folder earlier. Yeah. You know, I don't think that's something you have to approve. I've actually already posted that. Jim said it was okay to post it at any time. Oh, okay. Um, it's on the website or the same languages. I posted it in Maple Corner. I haven't gotten over to East Cal's yet. Um, it's in the town office. So I think what you do have to approve is the warning. Right. And that actually, once you approve it, it's uh, it, we can't post it until May 22nd, which would be the first day. Um, at the same time, I think it would be appropriate. Like, I think what I understood Jim saying would be for the select board maybe to make an announcement on, on um, Front Porch Forum. Yeah. You know, to make it clear what's happening. Okay. Now, does this notice of vacancy need to go in the newspapers or only the notice of a special town meeting? Uh, well, Jim that said we should put it in any places as possible, just like we would warn a meeting or whatever. So, you mean the vacancy? Uh, yeah, yeah. He we recommended point. that we be consider even going above and beyond what we normally do and putting it in the paper. That's smart. Yeah. We, have to find, we don't have candidates. So. And yeah, I mean, it, it, wouldn't, it, it wouldn't hurt to put it like in the world, um, Times Argus, Hardwick Gazette. And, mm -hmm. and at, least, at least once a week on Front Porch Forum. I mean, people yeah. don't necessarily read it every day. I, I, he did not put in the notice that it needs to be a callous resident and registered voter. I added that, and I think it's really important because somebody, oh, if yeah. they were interested, would have to move to town and register to vote right. in order to run, and then right. they might not be elected. So um, I think that's an important piece to add to the notice. Yes, I agree. Yeah, that's really important, I think. You're right. Because, you know, some people, some people might not know. Right. Cliff, can you go back to that language? So I'm, yeah, thank you. So that language can be just picked up and dropped on Front Porch Forum once a week between now and whenever candidates have to announce themselves, right? 
I yeah, guess. and it even would be good to include in the Front Porch Forum posting this uh, link to this section of the website because there is additional information embedded. Yeah, which is job the job description, description and the candidate form. Yep. Yep. Today, I I uh, deleted the manual from the Vermont League um, because it's actually really intimidating. <laughs> Oh. And a lot of the things we don't do, we don't register cars and there's a lot of things that we don't do. So I, I, I feel like it's better just to have the, a simple job description and then I can talk to people about what's real. Yeah. And I'm actually writing a manual that's specific to Callis. Oh, wow, great, thank you. Gee, I, I have to wonder, you know, Corinne Strideford would be, you know Corinne, does she come down for us up in Berlin? Rick, what are we talking about? I'm talking about the, I'm about the the, the, I'm talking about the town clerk position. If it well, she's, to be a I think job. she's um, she's going to be town clerk when Rosemary, but she doesn't live in Callis, right? I thought she didn't have to. I thought you just said that. No, you, no, you no, have no, to, no. Oh, you, you have, have to. to live. Live. I misunderstood. I thought you didn't have to. No, you have to. And yeah, and we probably really shouldn't be talking. Up. We maybe shouldn't be talking about specific individuals. Right. Okay. Sorry, my fault. Yeah. I could. I couldn't understand you. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, All right, so Denise, let's Denise, are you going to put that on Front Porch Forum? Sure. I mean, I already announced it myself, but I think coming right. from the select board is different, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, do that at least once to make sure that we we're checking the select board has to announce box. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I'll put it on. Um, all right. Now we need to review the special town meeting morning. Okay. And it's the one that says clean on it. Okay. Yeah, well, it's, um, yeah, the one I have is the one where Jim made some changes in red. So I'm assuming it's the same thing, right? And then he gave a second one, which is posted, which is without the red marks. It's the same thing. Okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, I found the clean one. Pretty simple. Yeah, it's very simple. Thank goodness, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we won't have to, we won't, I'm just thinking ahead. We won't need to do a special um, public forum for this, right? I mean, it's pretty straightforward. There's nothing to discuss if the candidates, if we get a whole slew of candidates and they want to have a public forum, then that's sort of up to them. Uh, I was reading uh, maybe some minutes from today. Something I read today specifically said we do not have to have a uh, special a forum or informational meeting, but maybe that was it. Okay, good. Thanks. But that was one of the things that Jim had shared with us that we don't need to do that in this case. But yes, if there were multiple candidates and they wanted to have an opportunity to make their case to the voters of Callis, they could have that option to host their own forum. Yeah. And of course, we would support that. Yep. All right, so is everybody good with the warning? Yeah. I would make a motion that we approve the warning as noted here. Um, a second. For a special town meeting to be held on June 30th for the election of a town clerk. I'll second that. Okay, any further discussion or questions? I have a question. Yes. Um, so if, if somebody came in and said they wanted to put another article on here, like uh, we should recognize every first Tuesday of the month is Blue Hat Day in the town of Callis, simple example. Do we then have to go back and reapprove the warning with that second article added? I would think so, yeah. Okay, well, then that's why I brought that up, just so everyone's aware that that possibility exists. Yeah, yeah, anybody could ask to have anything added. I don't know what the deadline would be for that, but we could find out if somebody I would something. think I would think it would have to be, well, Judy could tell us probably for certain, but if we got to get this out to everybody, well, no, the 24th, no. I think, would be the, the deadline, wouldn't it, Judy? Uh, the 31st is the last day to warn the election, the 31st. Okay. 
The okay. first day to warn it is the 22nd. So if we if we send it out on the 22nd and then people rallied and wanted something added, it would need to be turned around and reposted by the 31st in order to meet the have the everything line up for June 30th. Okay. Okay. So Sweet. really the so really the 31st, we wouldn't probably want to post this then until the 31st. Well, you know, not, I I I say do it early because the, the 24th is when petitions are due. I mean, well, consent forms are due. I just think the earlier we get it out, the better. Yeah. Um, oh, I see what you mean. But see, I don't think anybody would add to it if it, they didn't see it. <laughs> we yeah, keep, so we're, we keep we're sending. Gonna, I'm sorry, go ahead, Sharon. Is it the 31st of May or the 30th of April? 31st, 31st of May, of May. is okay. the last day to warn it in order okay. to be a June 30th election. Okay. The window okay. is um, no more than 40 days before, no less than 30 days before. Right. Got it. All right, are you ready to vote? Oh. All right, Cliff. I am an I. I'm an I, Rick. I. And Sharon. I. All right, I think that takes care of um, what we need to do for the town clerk position. Judy, thank you. Yeah, thank you. You put this all yeah. together so nice and neat for us. Nice little package. There is one more piece, which either you can do tonight or future, um, and that is determining whether to mail all the ballots to all the voters due to COVID. Um, and I don't know if you want to do that later. We'll, you know, we'll, Barbara and I will be planning how to execute all of this and get a lot, you know, if it's 1400 things we need to mail, we might be working with jet service or whatever. Um, yeah. Make sure we have, so I, I don't know if you want to tackle that tonight or a later time. Well, we do have a little bit of time so we could talk about it. Um, my preference would be to do what we did with town meeting before, which is to mail a ballot to every registered voter. Yep, I agree. I'm, yeah. I'm, I mean, we could go, we could go somewhere else and then have three candidates and a hotly contested um, race. And the fact that we decide not to mail ballots becomes a political brouhaha. Yeah. Just, I mean, just out of curiosity, is, is there going to be a time issue with that? Are we going to have enough windows for the? Rick, you you got to do. Rick, you got to turn up your volume or something. We can't hear you. Oh. Sorry. No, it's all right. Is this better? A little yeah, bit better. You, if they're going to, what, are we going to have adequate time to do that mailing and to get them back? You know, that would be my the only question I would have with that. I agree. I'd like to see it mailed to everybody. But well, there. It's a it's a regulated timeline um, of when they have to go out, and um, we would definitely meet that. It would be have the same as town meeting uh, in terms of time. Okay, so we it won't be a. I'm thinking of the mail service itself, getting right. things delivered and then getting them returned. I just want to make sure people don't lose their vote. They are mailed and they're mailed on May 28th. Yeah. And. Um, and the election's June 30th. 30th. So that's four weeks. That's a lot of time. Yeah. And we, and we and we did the same, Rick, just so you know, for um I mean, this town past town meeting and it and it was yeah. I don't know, we didn't really get any complaints, did we, Judy? No, it was really smooth. Yeah, yeah. That sounds good. Thanks. I, I... All right. Um, do you wanna we didn't put it on the agenda but i don't think i think it's still i think it applies to all of this or we can put it on the next agenda you want to vote on it tonight the ballots yeah i think let's wait one meeting you know in case some other angle occurs to us it, it feels like it feels like it, it isn't a big deal but i want to leave room for maybe it is Okay, so I'll put it on the agenda for the 26th then. And that's plenty enough time to make the yeah. decision anyways. Yeah. And okay. then, yeah, if people see the minutes from tonight and have an opinion, they can. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. 
All right. Thank anything, all. Any, anything else, Judy? Everything else good at the town office? Everything's routine at this point. Good. Um, all the, all, uh, no surprises. Oh, I mean, there are surprises, but that's part of it. <laughs> right. That's so thank you all very that, much. It's the beauty of being town clerk. There's always something new. Right. Um, thank you all very much for your support and for making this uh, just move forward. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for coordinating it all. Yeah, okay. Okay. We'll all right. Later. Bye, Judy. Bye. 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 Um, yeah, I'm going to see you tomorrow. Oh, that's right. I'll see At you. What's, what's tomorrow? Uh, mm -hmm. Title search. Oh, in person? Jack and I are doing a title search. In person? In person. Wow. Yep, little little train. Why do we have all those land records online? Sharon, why, why do we have all those land records in cots if you're going to do this so, in person? So we, could go, so we could do hours from here and only have to go into the town offices for two that we have to go back further. Ah, okay. Yep, yay. yay. See you tomorrow, Judy. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, so... Um, I sent around a list of appointments. Did everybody get that list? Is it in the folder? Yeah. yeah. It's not in the folder, but I can pull it up. Okay, that'd be minute. great. Because it's not, it's not quite eight o'clock yet. And I know Tom was planning to join the meeting tonight to talk about the trails committee. So maybe we could just do some, um, various appointments. All right. So there is some that, um, some of the Mount Regional Planning Commission, we really need to do that tonight because they're getting ready to start holding meetings and such. So they need to confirm who is filling the slots. And John, I sent John a couple of emails, but I'm sure he's not routinely checking emails with everything else he's got it going on, but we could reappoint um, Jan Olson to as the alternate, David Ellenbogen as TAC, and Karen McNeil as the alternate to TAC. Then there is, um, we already did Central Vermont Solid Waste Management. And Toby has declined to be reappointed to the VSP board and Peter Harvey hasn't gotten back to me. Um, one thought I did have with the Vermont State Police Advisory Board was to ask Rose to serve and she might be willing, depending on what night the meetings are and whether they conflict with another um, scheduled meeting she has on Tuesday nights. And then CV Fiber, we don't really need two alternates. Um, we just need one. And both David Healy and Jared Thomas said that they would be willing to continue to serve. So I would suggest that I would move the slate of appointees as noted here to CVRPC and CV Fiber. I'll second, and then I have a couple of questions. Okay, sure, go ahead. So, so the okay, this helps me understand what I didn't earlier. So the twenty, even though it says twenty twenty, does that does twenty twenty? Let me say it another way. Well, no, I don't understand the dates, Denise. So twenty twenty one for one year term, but then 2022, is that, did those flip because we already did them? Is that why they're 2022? Yeah, yeah, because we already did solid waste. Okay, so those flipped that day, okay. Right. Maybe we can like then, change them then, to green because they're done. And then the 2020s should have been done a year ago, but whoops, they weren't. Right. Okay, and so, okay. And so, and there, those are all one year terms. Right. So, okay. Got it. Okay. So you said, I made a motion, you seconded it. Is anybody else have any comments or questions? 
Yeah, do you need me to step in any of these? Yeah, I'd be glad to if you want me to. Yeah, I can. Rick, you got to do something with your with your. All right. Is it better? I mean, I do need to need to step in the any of these for a dollar or to be good. Yeah. I'm, I'm well, let's see to. how let's see how we do with with this. But then, thank you for the offer. That that's really helpful. Okay. All right. Are you ready to vote? Yep. Cliff. Aye. I'm an I, Rick. Aye. And Sharon. Aye. And perhaps we could do um, E911 coordinator. Um, Anne's willing, she sent me an email and said she's willing to continue. Um, and this is the time of year where things can start getting busy with people doing building and those kinds of things. So it would be good if we could get agree to reappoint her to this position. Um, I'll make a motion that we reappoint Anne to the E911 board. Okay, I'll second that. Anybody have any comments or questions or are you ready to vote? Uh, just note that uh, we are thankful for Anne's willingness to continue in the role. Yes, absolutely. All right, Cliff, you ready to vote? Aye. Okay, I'm an aye, Rick. Aye. And Sharon. Aye. Okay. Um, Historic Preservation Commission. That's on my little chart there. Um, did um, he, does does Katie keep is Katie keeping this chart now? Yes. Okay. So I, what I did is I copied stuff from her spreadsheet so that we weren't looking at the whole thing, just what I was hoping we could get done tonight. So that's why there's the separate one. So I wouldn't get confused. Maybe nobody, maybe no, and nobody else will get confused, but I might. Um, uh, that so, I, I, I was thinking, don't we have a lot more than this? The, okay. Oh yeah, we do. We do. Yep. Gotcha. And, so, and chairs are checking with their committees. Um, so anyways, we have for historic preservation, and you'll note, um, Tobin Anderson and Susanna Blatchley, um, we didn't reappoint them last year, even though they should have been, but we had the COVID stuff, and we never did get around to appointments. And then this year is Karen Lane and Larry Bush, and they've all requested to be reappointed, and David Sheets would be thrilled if they were all reappointed. So that's why you'll see in the term that these are the Historic Preservation Commission members are three-year terms. So if you go back to 2020, then that's why those expire in 23. And Karen and Larry, whose terms expire 21, three-year terms makes them expire in 24. Got it. So I would make a motion to reappoint those four members of the Historic Preservation Commission. Second. There's, okay, any other comments or questions? All right, Cliff. Aye. I'm an aye. Rick? We can't hear you, Rick. Still can't hear you. Sharon, you want to vote? I'm an aye. <laughs> okay. Rick, you can give us a thumbs that's, up. That's three. Yep. Okay. There you go, Rick's and I. He's All indicated right. with a thumbs up. Thank you, Rick. I don't know what's going on with your... It's all Melanie's fault that the computer isn't cooperating tonight, right, Rick? Okay. Um, so the Trails Committee seems like it's the... Welcome, Tom. Hi. Hi, Denise. Hi, everybody. How are you? Doing good. How's so everybody? the trails committee seems to be the most popular committee in town. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of fun. It is. Um, it is. And it sounds like you have a really great new project. With a, do you want to tell us a little bit about that project? Uh, which one? <laughs> the one with some kind of a bridge. Um, right. Well, we... Uh, we're, we've got a, a, a bit of a push towards some construction projects this summer. The biggest, uh, most ambitious 
project is um, uh, putting a uh, boardwalk and an observation deck uh, at the end of um, the Little Mud Pond Spur Trail that comes off of uh, the Broadview Farm Trail up in the northeast corner of the town. Uh, Little Mud Pond is this very remote, isolated little pristine mountain pond. Um, it's part of a series of ponds up there in that uh, region. And um, the land that the boardwalk would be going on is uh, owned by Tim Howe. And Tim has really been the, the one who's pushed this. Mm. So, uh, so we're very excited about the prospect of uh, building this. It would be kind of similar to the one at Chickering Bog, mm -hmm. I think, about the same length. And Randy Allen has um, given us a quote for um, for doing the work. Uh, it's not cheap, and that's why I came to you, Denise, because usually, uh, since I've been chairman, I, you know, the the kinds of uh, appropriations requests have been rather small just for signage and some yeah. hardware here and there for putting up signs stuff like that but this is a big big one his estimate is twenty five hundred dollars uh we have the money in our account and then some but it's uh it is a big a big expenditure uh then we also um we just built another kiosk on one of our trails up on the robinson hill road and that we were able to raise uh, from private funds to pay for that, but uh, we'd like to put up another one at the Calistown Forest, and the uh, estimate for that is six hundred and fifty dollars, unless we could raise the funds privately somehow. And Randy has has indicated his uh, interest in that project. Uh, I I met with the Conservation Commission about it because the Conservation Commission really is in charge over there, and uh, they were all uh, in favor of the project. We thought it would be a great idea to have a kiosk there so we could have some mapping put up uh, for the trail system, We're working on the mapping um, already, and um, maybe some other information about the Callistown Forest, the Trails Committee, the Conservation Commission, just um, orient people towards that uh, trail system over in there. So those are the two big, I guess, building projects we have. Yeah, well, after you, after you sent that, then I got to thinking about it. The, I think you got a donation of like two thousand dollars. That was, was that that was unrestricted funds. Yeah, we could. And then that. Mm -hmm. I don't think I don't I don't recall how the other money got in there. But if there wasn't there was no money that was a specifically uh, an approved article at a, on a town meeting warning that was there that, that's in that account that would have had some kind of restrictions on what it could be used for? Um, I can check with Sandra and also with Reed, of course, Reed Charrington, who yeah. has a lot more history with the committee about that. But um, I, off the top of my head, I don't believe there are any specific restrictions for any of that, the, those funds. But yeah, and I, think, into it. and I think Sandra said there were, there was like 3,000 something dollars in the Right. Um, in your in your yep. current account. Yep. We're so really, we're fundraising all the time. So uh, yeah. we can. Thirty five hundred is in your account right now. Yeah. So this is a big part of the budget to yeah. build these these uh, these projects. Again, we might be able to um, access some private funding for it mm -hmm. too. So uh, you know, it's. Uh, yeah. What I'm. What I don't I'm, know how it will come out in the end, but something on that order. Yeah. Well, what I'm getting at is we really appreciate. Knowing about the project, it's really sounds really, really a really great project. But if the funds are in your account and there's no restrictions on how to use them, then, in my opinion, you can just spend them as you see fit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate knowing that, and thanks for your email about it, because I just I'm still kind of new to the chairmanship and. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just didn't feel entirely comfortable making the decision. Well, I wouldn't make it on my own. It would be a decision right. by the committee. And we've talked about it, uh, but not in in the detail that we'll have to at our next meeting. But, yeah. but anyway, I just wanted some direction from the select board about that. So I appreciate it. Hey, no, and that's fine. I'm glad that you are letting us know. Oh, I'm sorry, Sharon, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I agree completely. And the one thing that occurred to me, um, Tom, 
in this spirit is I and you, rest of you correct me if I'm if I'm wrong. Um, I think the purchasing policy would apply, and it and, and not to this circumstance. Not as I just pulled it up to kind of flip through it. Is that five thousand um, dollars, Sharon? It's five. It's five thousand, Tom. Yeah. Um, but but just to be aware. In fact, I'll I have an email with the link in it. I'll email it to you. Yeah. Because as a general matter. It, it would apply to you. Um, it applies to any town expense. And so, you know, read through it and know what the parameters are. Right. And there'll be something you'll say, oh, good. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, that, that sounds great. Yeah. You know, no, I, yeah. I thought I'll, about that, but knowing that it was under 5,000, but it's good. It would be good for you to see it. So thank you, Sharon, for sending excellent. it to me. Appreciate, I appreciate that. Thank you, Sharon. Um, Okay, and then you have another request, which is to increase the membership um, on the trails committee. You've had one resignation, Gail Graham. She was on there a long time. How long was she? I on think there? she was. She's been on there since the inception of the com of the committee. Really? Yeah, for so long time. Yeah. Yeah, and she resigned. I think it was back in March, yeah. and so that would that would create one vacancy. And then you're asking us to increase the membership from nine to 10. So that would be two positions, correct? Uh, yeah, uh, that seemed to be the consensus uh, at, on the committee when I polled everyone that um, yeah, we, we interviewed the two candidates who I believe are, are here on Zoom. Tim Looks Maker, like they are. Tom Cronin. And uh, we were very impressed with both of them. We really couldn't make it make a, a decision between them. Uh, and so one possibility we were uh, thinking about was asking the board to just uh, increase the membership to, from nine to 10. Yes. And we've done, we've done this just for a little background for others. We've done this periodically with the planning commission. We've gone from five to seven to nine, back to seven, down to five. Conservation commission, kind of the same thing. I think we've done maybe at least once. So it's within our purview to be able to change the size of the, the number of members. Are you not worried? Um, okay. The I, 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 know what you're gonna, I know what you're gonna say. Okay, <laughs> go ahead, Denise, go ahead, read my mind. <laughs> I, I was gonna say, usually we like an odd number. So that if there's a vote, yeah. there we're is a lot. tie. And I did mention that to Tom when I talked to him. And yeah, I, um, I, yep, go ahead. And you didn't seem to think that there was ever going to be an issue that there's really nothing that you really, there's not a lot that you vote on other than like maybe the split bridge, right? Yeah, it's not, uh, it's not the kind of committee where we have a lot of close votes. <laughs> I, I, wouldn't uh, I wouldn't expect it. No. Yeah. I mean, there's always that possibility. And, um, but I, I, I think it's very remote. Well, if the possibility comes up, you could always come back, ask us to increase it to 11, put someone else on, yeah, and you're good have, to go. I've had at least two, maybe three people within the last six months, I think, uh, express an interest in being on the committee. So wow. uh, that's one possibility that we could increase the size. I, I guess I'm a little reluctant just because I don't want to get too unwieldy, but um, we have had great participation. The last yeah. meeting we had, everybody showed up. I mean, partly that's because I think COVID, everybody's, you know, every everybody shows up to every meeting nowadays. <laughs> but <laughs> but, um, but no, we do have a great committee. They're all very um, active and um, they contribute a lot and they, 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 uh, it's a good bunch. So yeah, great. You can always steer people to other opportunities in town. Right. Yeah, yes, I think we, we need we need them. planning we need planning commission and conservation. Commission. I think actually with a couple of those candidates, I actually did that. I don't know if they followed up on it or Good. not. Good. Yeah. yeah, great. We can use all the help we can get. Exactly. All right. So um, I would make a motion to increase the size of the trails committee from nine to ten. Second. So are you ready to vote? All right. Cliff? Aye. I'm an I. Rick? Aye. Sharon? Aye. 
Okay, now you have two candidates here. Thank you, Tim and Tom. Tim and Tom and Tom. All right. Thank you. Thanks for stepping up. Yeah, thank you. Sounds like a great group, right? Yeah. How could it be any more fun? Are these going to be, um, how, how do the trails committees positions run? They are, trails committee is, I can tell you in a minute. Trails committee is. I was looking they for. Are, they are three year terms. And you'll see on that sheet that I sent around today, um, because again, we didn't do reappointments last year. So we have three members whose terms technically ended in 2020. That's Tony Tating, Nice Wilder, and Michael Fullerton. So reappointing them would give them a term of 2023. Then we have Gail Graham's position that doesn't end until 24. So one of the new members would fill in for Grant, uh, Gail's position and then the creation of a new position effective um, in 21 would be three years would be 24. And then we have Charlotte Hanna and Steve Killeran whose terms expire in 21. So their three years would bring them to 24. Do we need to do any, since we missed a year, do we need to do any special terms to kind of keep them staggered or do you? Well, they are staggered. Them, will they still remain staggered? I mean, with the. Yeah. Right, because the three, Tony, Denise, and Michael would be stag would still be staggered because their terms would end in 23. The other ones right, we're right. looking at would be 24. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> does that make yeah. sense, Rick? Yeah, it does. Okay. Cliff, what's the, which document is that in the folder? It's not in the folder. It's um, in an email that Denise sent out today. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So Tom, would you like us to introduce us to Tim and sure. the other Tom? Yes. Um, so uh, Tim Maker. There's Tam. Hi, Tam. Hello. Hi, Tam. Thanks, thanks Good for Good evening, uh, everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, Tim, well, what you can, yeah, you can speak for yourself. So why don't you go ahead and give an introduction? Sure. Um, I live on the, <clears throat> the West County Road, um, north of Maple Corner. We've lived here since 1983 when we built our house. Um, I've been a lifelong hiker. Uh, my wife and I use the the Callis Trails quite a bit, mostly up on Robinson Hill, um, but we also are long distance hikers. And so it's really in my blood and I would like to do whatever I can to, to make the, the trails situation in, in Callis uh, better than it even is now. Great. Uh, and uh, Tom Cronin, you're here too, right? Yeah. yeah, good evening, everyone. Then. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, thank you for an opportunity to talk. Um, my fiance and I moved to Callis in June. This is our first home. Uh, and one of the things that drew us to Callis was the Trails Committee. And we've been enjoy enjoying them thoroughly uh, since we've moved here, uh, especially now in the spring and seeing all the amphibian movements and the vernal pools starting to thaw out is a great treat. So I really wanted to be able to give back to the community by contributing to uh, that aspect of Cal. And you, Tom, Tom, Tom yeah. didn't you didn't you join a couple of select board meetings in the past? Correct. Yeah. Uh, in order to listen in to yeah, that's what I thought. Um, yeah, some uh, points from the conservation committee with Stephanie. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Tim so. Uh, Thank you both for stepping up and doing this. Tom, Tim, you're Neil. Are you Neil's dad? Yes, I am. I oh, hear he's great as well. I love. Yep. We grow them good here in Callis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that we do. Yeah. 
All right, any other questions, board members? So who is going to step into Gail's position? That would, that's a good question. Tom, do you have a recommendation? Um, I, I'm not real. I mean, they both end in 2024. Is that what we determined? Yeah. Both of these. Yeah. So I guess it really doesn't matter. Doesn't really so matter. Point. Yeah. Okay. But we have to put it down on our, we keep a master spreadsheet. So I'll have to have Katie put this in. So how about um, if we appoint Tom Cronin to finish out Gail's term and ask Tim to be in, in the new position. Sounds good. Does that work for you, Tom Flatchley? Yes, it does. Yep, fine. Okay, so, guys. I, so I would make that motion to appoint Tim Maker to the new position 2024 and to ask Tom to complete Gail's term 2024. Um, is there a second? I'll second. second. Okay, you ready to vote or is there any more questions? Does that, I'm sorry, does that mean that one of them's in a, did you say they're all three years or I lost track? Yeah, they're, the trails committee um, appointments are all three year. Okay, so we're basically. Both of, these, both of these terms would end in 2024, but we just needed to identify who was taking on the position that was being vacated by Gail and who was taking on the new position that we voted to create. Right, they're both being effectively appointed a year into a three-year term. Wait, no, no, no. Oh, Gail is resigning because her term is up. She's no, not. Gail, re Gail resigned. Well, her term was up, but she resigned. Right. Okay. As well, she's not so, mid-cycle. Okay. Yeah, that was my confusion. Thank you. Yep. Um. So I made a motion. Did somebody second it? I think they did. Everybody. Oh, okay. We're ready to vote. Cliff. Yep. Hi. I'm an I, Rick. Hi. Sharon. Hi. And then we need to do the other appointments that I noted here. Which Ready? are? Which are Tony Kading, Denise Wilder, and Michael Fullerton to another three year term. They would end in 23 because we didn't reappoint last year when their terms really technically oh, ended sure. but term positions carry forward until somebody's either reappointed or not so that's my motion i'll second okay <clears throat> any other comments or clarification needed all right cliff hi i'm an i rick i uh, sharon i and then we have the two that are um, up this year, which is Steve Killerin and Charlotte Bassage. And then again, those are three year terms, so they're 24. So I would make a motion to reappoint those two positions. So we have, so, we, so we're gonna have four people because it's a 10 member board. We're gonna have four, this is the cycle where we have four people, not just three. Right, so right. in 2024, there'll be four up and then in 2027, I guess. Right. And so the four getting reappoint, the getting appointed are Steve, Charlotte, Tim and Tom. Yes. Well, Tim, no, Tim and Tom are new appointments. Charlotte right. and Steve are reappointments. Right, but those okay. are the four, those are the four for right now. Right, but we already voted. Can we already vote on Tom and yeah. Tim? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just wrapping so, my head around it. Okay. So what we have now is Steve and Charlotte. So I would make a motion to reappoint both um, people. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, Cliff. Aye. I'm an I. Rick. Aye. And Sharon. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Sorry for the confusion, Tom, but no problem. like I said, we got sidetracked last year and had to jump into COVID. It's been a weird year. Yeah, for sure. To say the least. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
All right. All right. And thank you to Tom and Tim again. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank all right. This meeting. <laughs> okay. Are we all done from our end? Yes, you are. You're welcome. Okay. Great. Day, as Thanks, always. everybody. And happy trails. Yeah. Well, same to you. you. We yep. should have that on a t shirt. <laughs> Take care. Take care. So, continuing along the lines of appointments. I'm hoping that we can, there's another whole batch of people that we need to appoint to one year terms. Um, so I'll send that, I'll, I'll kind of do like I did with this one and send that around. Denise, um, would, you, would you at least as FYI send the whole big fat thing too? Well, it's, it, you have that. Where, do, okay, where do I have it? Like. Uh, is it's it on? in the shared it's in the sh it's in the shared drive and it's a separate um it's, folder it's, that's labeled uh, i think it's I forget what it's labeled it says appointments or something like that on it it's oh, separate. It, it's it sits on its own i found yep. it yep, yep. Okay, okay got it okay yep um all right next up and i don't see anybody here to talk about this grant opportunity so i'm not, not sure what to do about it john's not here and bill unless bill tunes in at 8 30 because we're i can't believe we're ahead of schedule usually it's we're behind schedules now we're ahead of schedule um bill powell might come in is that what we're thinking yeah i didn't get any response back from him but that doesn't mean anything most of the time people don't respond anyways to email so um, there's a, there's a grant money. I think I sent, I sent around, um, an email that I got from, what's his name? Brennan Toman at Central Vermont Solid Waves Management District saying that there were grant opportunities available. And John suggested, um, a fence and a gate around the dump in East Callis which, you know, can sometimes there can be problems with people just dumping trash. Um, and Bill said he'd be happy to check into that as if that was something that we wanted to pursue. And I'm sure if John was here, he'd give you a lot more long history, but we, we have talked about it in the past, Who's, about putting, who, putting a fence and a gate in. Who, so who, like, okay, so, you know, we're all going to think this this is a no brainer and it is. Um, but then like, where does it go? We approve it. And then who, who makes it happen? Who we would ask, we would ask Bill to check out getting a grant for that project. And like do the work for us. Yes. Okay. Right. That's, is that, that's one of his, the roles of the, of the folks who are, we appoint to do, to be our liaisons. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And the, are there any are there any issues of you know with like snow removal or with uh, Toby or or Alfred on that or is, is that the yeah thing? that's a again it's hard to hear you Rick but that's a good point we would want to make sure that the road crew has a key and that the gate is you know one of those kind that kind of opens up you know double wide or whatever you call it to get yeah, in there to plow snow. Alpha. And then we'd have to make sure that the <clears throat> person, um, what is it? Is it Perry? I think it's Perry's that do the weekly pickup of trash and recycles. Mm -hmm. So they'd have to, we'd have to make sure they get a key, but we for sure, you know, want to cover all the bases. Yeah. Okay. You know, and the only thing I can think of is so you put a gate and the fence up, it's not going to stop people from dumping stuff outside the fence. Right. but it might help to deter. That's the only, the only negative that, that I can think of. You can always take the gate down if it doesn't work. True, yeah. true. And put, a, and put a deer camera up to oh. find the people that are dumping. There yeah. you go, and then, him. and then put the movies on Front Porch Forum. That's right. <laughs> Do you it's recognize this person? Taxes, right? It's like the deer that people do. Yeah. Well, somebody recently got a, 
a video of a bobcat in, in Maple Corner. Oh, and one in, there's one um, over at Butterfield, um, either at Jeb and Carolyn's or Paul and Cornelia's, there was a beautiful bobcat. Where's there's this? A mother, I, I think uh, there's a mother and cubs down here off Adamant Pond, too. In this area. Wow. Mm. That's, uh, yeah. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Anyway, keep your cats um, keep your cats inside. Yeah. Easier said than done. <clears throat> yeah, I know. So what do you think about this opportunity for a fence and a gate? Yeah, I would say we if Bill's wanting to do the initial legwork looking into it, I would definitely suggest we do that. Does it make sense to ask John to be his liaison on the board? Yes. And I would be for that. I would too, just assuming that we, you know, we aren't, we don't want to create a problem for maintenance like that. It's the only caveat I would add. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can make that clear that we want to make sure that the road commissioner and operations manager, um, you know, are are aware of the project and Alfred might have a, you know, can tell us what size truck would go in there to plow. I don't know if it would be the little truck, you know, so we'd have to watch out to make sure the opening is big enough. Well, you have to get a tractor driller in there too, correct? For a while. For what? Do they haul that with a tractor driller or do they pull it with a... I can't, I can't, Rick, I can't understand you. Is it a roll-on, you know, like a flatbed roll-on? that We just have to make sure that's big enough. They they right. didn't I when I've been by there it's I think it's they just pull a um a trailer with their truck. Okay. Because it's a private private hauler, so it's not like Casella coming in. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Do we want to um have a motion to ask Bill to or authorize Bill to check this out? If so there's any paperwork, you know, he's gonna they're gonna have to come back to us anyways with um paperwork to sign off on. So this would be more let's see what they come up with for a plan and is that a motion, Denise? Yeah, sort of. I'll sort of <laughs> second it then. Okay. I don't really know what I don't really know what to say. I guess it this would be a motion to authorize bill to um take the lead on applying for a grant for a project at the dump on moscow woods road for a fence and a gate and also to coordinate efforts and sizing with the road commissioner and operations manager and to authorize john to be bill's liaison on the project um that make is that comprehensive enough? I don't know what John being Bill's liaison means. So if Bill wants to run this by one of the board members before oh, he's, he's, a, he's a, John got it. Right. So and then so, you know. So I so I think I I here's my issue, Denise, and it might we might need to be built into the motion. Um, according to the agenda, the applications are due on April 23rd, Right. which means that if we are really going to approve an application, we would have to approve it next week at our special meeting. Yep. So, um, right. I don't know. T- I don't know timing wise if they can do it, but is that what you're getting at? The timing? Yeah. 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 I mean, that, <laughs> that, that we, uh. Yeah, I mean, I think that that date that we for the select board. Uh, yeah, I guess we want to approve the concept for them to bring back something, if possible. Maybe that's, that's the that's the magic phrase. Yeah, if possible, bring it back for our approval next Monday night. Yeah, let's say so. Let's add that friendly motion, that friendly amendment to the motion. Poor Katie. <laughs> She'll figure it out. She'll figure it out. I'll second the that friendly amendment if we need that. Okay, thank you. All right, are we ready to vote? Cliff? Hope so. Was that aye. an aye? Okay, I'm an aye. 
And Hi. Rick, you're an I. And Sharon. Hi. Okay. Um, other updates. Cliff, I think several of these next items are updates from you, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, nothing to report of significance on the IT front, um, but we should try to get Ruben at our next regular meeting because we will um, be looking to renew the contract with RB Tech. So you mean at the night on the 26th you're talking about? Yes, is it the 26th? Yeah. Whenever our next regular meeting is scheduled, we should try and get Ruben on the docket, see if he's available. Um, okay. I'm certainly happy to um, contact Ruben and see if he's available. I just want to make sure that we can fit it into the agenda. Yeah, because um, the contract renewal is May 1st, and that's our last meeting before the contract is due to be renewed. So, yeah, we should. Yep. Okay, I'll coordinate that with Ruben. Um, town Hall. Um, we are starting to get a lot of requests of people wondering yes. when the town will, hall will be available for usage again. Um, ultimately, we have been uh, deferring to input we received from VLCT as well as the governor's recommendations, as well as our uh, input from our town health officer. And uh, right now, it looks like the consensus is, is we're not quite there where we can open it back up. It, if we can just hold on a little bit longer, uh, that day should come soon. Um, however, the, the town office is continuing to get uh, these inquiries and they're not sure how to field them. Uh, the other part of this is, is because we do not currently have a management agreement with the Friends of Town Hall, um, they're not comfortable being the ones to field these questions. So just be aware that it's happening. Denise has uh, responded to some of the people who have come to the town office and asked about the availability of the building um, or when it would be available again. Um, I'm sure we will start seeing more and more requests come through. With um, regards... Can we, Cliff, do you... I actually had... Um, I, I'm glad I was glad to see this on the on the agenda and that there was an e a little bit of an email traffic. I had um, somebody reach out and ask me that exact question. Do we have a response that we are giving to people that you can maybe send to me or Denise? Uh, can you Denise has me? been the one who's been sending responses. I don't think you really have standard language, but you could maybe share those emails with Sharon so she sees what you've been saying. Yeah, I've, I've been trying to copy select board members on all these emails, and you'll see, I asked, I asked, because um, it's free, I asked um, here at PLCT, and they're still recommending to wait until um, closer to July 4th, which I tend to agree with. Okay, so uh, yeah, I saw your I saw your question to him, and if if there was, if he got back to us, I didn't see that one, but so is that the general response is that we that we have not opened it up we are certainly aware of the desire and the need and yes. now the guidance we're getting is not before july 4th those three points kind of is what we, yeah what we yeah. say okay yeah and when we do open it back up um i don't know if you mentioned the management agreement or not cliff but this kind of no, all i haven't gotten into this, that yet but i, yeah, I was going to get into that next yeah, because it kind of all goes together. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay, so before I segue into talking about the role of the Friends of Town Hall, is there any other questions regarding uh, these inquiries that we're receiving? It sounds like we're all kind of on the same page as how to respond now. Should anyone approach any of us? Yeah, I mean, I had somebody approach that wants to have a wedding. You know, yep. and somebody else wants to film a dance video there. Yeah, some Willow, somebody, somebody in Willow, they want to do a, a video with some kind of dance thing, kind of like the thing that Hasso is going to do with the, you know, 
Yeah, I think those are, the people, those are the people that I heard from too, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's good to be other, all on the same page. The other part of that is, do we want to tell Judy and Barbara if they get those requests to just send them along to Denise or how do we want to field that? Um, I'm, I don't mind answering requests, but we could just give them the same information so everybody has the same information. Yeah, I think they would be fine responding as long as they yeah. know the yeah. rules of engagement, as it were. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe just quick little uh, a statement for, from the select board. Yeah. Well, Katie can put it in the minutes. Yep. And then everybody has the same information. Okay. That sounds good. Okay, uh, moving to the topic of the management agreement and um, friends of the town hall. We are getting very close to the point where we're ready to re-engage with the select board and discuss the management agreement and see if we can uh, iron it out to everyone's satisfaction. What the friends group has asked me to suggest to the board is, uh, actually ask of the board, would the board be willing to consider setting aside a special meeting uh, sometime in May for this discussion? Because we could imagine that it, it's more than a 15 minute discussion and it might make sense to have a dedicated special meeting just devoted to that subject. Well, even if we do it as a special meeting and it's we allow like at least a whole hour. Mm -hmm. Because really what we would be doing in this meeting is looking at the revised, um, the document the last time you saw it, we were refer referring to it as guidelines for use of town hall. And the request from the select board was for me to convert that into a policy with a signature line and whatnot. I have almost got that done. I've kind of beefed it up a little bit so that some of the language is a little more specific than what you saw in the previous iteration. Uh, then we would have a discussion around the management agreement itself. And finally, uh, an opportunity for the board to see the rental agreement that the um, friends group would be using with people who were interested in renting the hall for these cultural events that we've discussed. So putting all that together, then we imagine this discussion easily is an hour, if not a little longer. Yeah. Yeah, we can, you know, have a special meeting to do that. And I think that's a really good idea to take, to okay. take, the, time, to take the time for the board as a whole to review the and, document. And the entire friends group has agreed that they will all make themselves available at that meeting. So anyone who is maybe representing a particular aspect of any of these documents, we have all the experts in the room at the same time. Great. Yep, that's, that um, would be great. I will, I will go back to the friends um, and we will come back to the board with a couple of um, proposed dates and figure out what works. Okay, sounds good. Thank you for spearheading that effort. No, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, and unless there's any questions or anything, I think that's it for those items. Um, going back to reopening the hall, I wonder if it would create more, more emails than we want or whatever about maybe posting something on front porch forum about, you know, the select board is beginning to talk about when we might start reopening the, the town hall and town office, things like that. Um, and that we're looking to follow, to continue to follow the CDC guidelines and best practices. And we may be looking at, you know, as the governor's talked about reopening things around July 4th, do you think that would create more traffic and more questions than it solves? Or is it just, I think it's, it may be a good thing to do just as a public relations kind of thing. I actually like what you just said, Denise, as being, so this is for Katie, ding, 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 for that little statement that we will give to the town office, that we're still, we are still following the governor's guidelines and the CDC's expertise. 
um, a, a, you know, as part of our framing of, of the answers to the questions. Yeah, um, the reopening, the real, I think they're calling it the reopening process or something they're calling it the governor. Yeah, is. yeah, but but if we're gonna hand a, a statement from the board to the town staff to, to basically read to anybody, I mean, we wanna make that thorough, but also ha have them be able to say, this is what the select board said. Yeah. This is what the select board said. Um, so the question of whether we put it on front porch forum. Maybe it's too soon. That's what I think. I think okay. it's great we're talking about it. We're an open meeting. Anybody who's reading the minutes will see that we're talking about it. But we got if we put it out there now, we've got two months, three months yeah. of conversation. Well, two two months. May, June, yeah. July, three. May. Now, if, if we're talking, the governor's talking about reopening things around July 4th. 4th, yes, yeah, so Right, but today's April 12th. Right, so, so two, 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 and a, two and a half months. Two, two months and 22, 22 days. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, let's keep this on our radar. Um, and I'm sure that there's going to be guidance and, you know, chitter chatter from the governor's office about things. Um, so, so good. Thank you for having the conversation. Thank you. All right. I don't, um, I would like to look at all the, I don't think there's anything to go in executive session about tonight. Um, I do want to talk about having the special meeting on April 19th, um, to talk about the, um, procedures documents. We've got, um, Rick and I attended the East Montpelier Fire Department, East Montpelier Select Board joint meeting last Thursday. Katie's done minutes. Um, so we need to get on the stick about what we're going to be. We should review the, the documents. And I told the group that night because they were a little perturbed, I think, that we hadn't that we were doing this and I said you know it's been quite a few years it's been at least five years um since any of us have really sat down and looked at the documents I think it's a good opportunity for us to sit down and review the documents for everybody to do that um I didn't get into they wanted to know what our concern was and I said I'm not getting into that tonight I just think it's a good opportunity for everybody to look at the the contract including the fire department and East Mount Clear Select Board. Why would you not want to periodically review the contract and right. not just automatically renew all every time? Um, yeah, if there are specific issues we're looking at, we should be getting our ducks in a row. Well, Rick, we can't understand you. <laughs> Rick said we should get our ducks in a row if there's specific. Oh, okay, is that what he said? <laughs> quack, yeah. quack, Rick. I understand you. <laughs> well, so, so we were I'm pretty sure we were in an, in a public meeting with them when we raised exactly what our issue was. Yes, we were. With 15 people in the room. So I kind of yep. I kind of don't get the confusion. Well, it well it, it, it is it just I'm not going to it just it is what it is. So and I think we really have, you know, one main issue that we brought up as you said at that specific meeting. And we said then that we would probably be giving notice of our non-renewal we because did. we want to talk about that, but we had to put it in writing, which we did, mm -hmm. and we made the deadline. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think really that's probably the, the main issue, but we should, we should really do our due diligence on behalf of the taxpayers and review the whole contract just to see. Yep. No, I agree. So I would like to, I would like to devote some time on the nineteenth to that, and then I've got this other sad situation that I'd like to see if the board. I know this would be a special meeting for mainly those two items, but um, there's this uh, woman who has a house on I don't know if it's on Valentine Road or Baton Road, but it's over on that side of town. She's recently divorced, and she was given custody of the house. She's trying to sell it, and when they moved in, they did not go on to commercial power. They had, I don't know what other kind of power they have, but some other kind of power, 
and she is asking for us, she wanted us to approve work in the right of way. And then, and given the recent experience we had with GMP, and it was GMP that was actually doing the work and not those, the residents, do you remember that? You guys, I don't think Rick wasn't on then, but we, we determined when that application came to us that it was really the power company that was doing the work in the town's right of way and they were technically the applicants not the landowners were not the applicants so this same thing applies with this app this request that it has to come from hardwick electric and i explained mm -hmm. that i explained that to her i explained it to the guy at hardwick electric that he said well we never have we never have to do this and i said well that's we have a application for a right of way you're the power company, you're doing the work, so you are the, have to be the applicant. So things and, got and they, of, and they own the lines in the end. Right, yeah. right. Well, you know, Hardwick Electric, they do very little work in Callis because most of Callis doesn't have Hardwick Electric. Only on, I, it's, a, it's a strange route because it goes from that area over on Ballantyne or Baton Road, I forget which road it is, down to East Callis because Jan Olson has Hardwick Electric and I have Hardwick Electric. So you can see how weird the, the lines are. So apparently Hardwick, so anyways, Hardwick Electric probably hasn't put a power pole in in decades. So now she needs to get the commercial power hooked back up to her house so she can put it on the market. So I, I told her, I'm sorry, I can't, she sent me an email today sort of saying, I need this on the agenda tonight. And I said, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't do that. And, you know, Hardwick Electric dragged their feet because I talked to them like two weeks ago and said, you know, here's, here's a link to the application, fill it out with your check and send it to the town office and we'll get it on an agenda. So they never got me the application until Friday. And I'm sorry, but it's too late. Oh, so we're putting this on for next meet meeting. Well, I'm asking you all if you would be okay with me putting her on, putting this application on the agenda for the 19th. Alfred has already looked at the project and doesn't have an issue. But, you know, if we're going to make everybody else follow the right process, then they need to as well. Well, so what I'm wondering is, is there, is, and may, if you, if you said it, Denise, and I was, I missed this detail, I apologize. Is there a, is there a, a sense of urgency? Is there? Yes, is there, there is a sense of urgency because yeah, she I'm needs sorry. to put the house on yeah, the market right. and sell it. Okay. It, that's what it is, is one, is that one week before so it's not it's not that the it, it's it's getting it on the market one week earlier than right. if we make her wait till the 26 right and then of course hardwick electric has to have time to do the work okay so it's both and yeah rick you were going to say something but i can't hear you i think yeah it would be time sensitive because it doesn't it doesn't be, the work's got to be done before you can sell it we're into the season, so I mean, I'd be good with that, like to help them out. I mean, yeah. Okay, and that and that'll take one thing off our plate for the twenty sixth. Yeah, I mean, it, it won't. Take, it just seems it just seems like the right thing to do to me. It does seem like it does seem like the right thing to do, um, and you know, we're going to have to stay alert to precedent that we set and we might regret this but i'm okay until it becomes a problem and we have to get more rigid well we can can we say that i mean i don't know if there's a formal way of saying it but it's not resident, but we're going to... rick i don't know what is different this night about your computer than it is any other know. night something in the bandwidth or something like that. Uh, would it help if you if you turn off your video does it make it better Hi. Rick was saying something about should we just say that? But I mean, this woman isn't going. It isn't going to be her who comes back the next time with an urgent thing. It's going to be somebody else. So right. Then I would and I would make her wait. And I already told her she had to wait till the twenty second, twenty six. But I was thinking if we're doing a special meeting, you know, she's been trying to get this to happen for like a month, and Hardwick Electric kind of held her up. Yeah, I mean, I'm okay with it, and and I just want to, I just, 
you know, hope Katie will, well, Katie, here, capture this in our minutes, that if this becomes a problem, we're going to have to be more rigid because, right. you know, we need people planning ahead and understanding that we don't routinely have a meeting we can just pop it into. And if we do, it's because we have other things that we're trying to get done that aren't regular business. Right. And, you know, and I, and I go back to, you know, she's somebody that hasn't dealt with town government much. She doesn't understand. You know, and, and this is what happens with a lot of people. They just don't understand what the process is and the timing of getting agenda items on. And, you right. know, I said, I, and we need to, we need to do a notice 48 hours in advance and it was too late. I'm sorry. Yeah, and she right. was, you know, she understood, but she was, you know, clearly not happy, but that's, that's what you're going to, that's what we deal with all the time is people just don't understand or know right. the process. Well, we're not a city hall. We're not 20, we're not a five, you know, we're not a 40 hour a week right. operation. So there's a couple other agenda items um, that are going to take some time. I don't know, you know, Peter Harvey sent us that email and I'm trying to decide, do we schedule him to come and talk again? I mean, we've kind of heard his speech two or three years in a row. I would vote yes, and I would time limit him. I mean, and and this this is part of our, our larger, you know, movement is to is to say, you know, this is how much time we are allotting for this item, Peter. And we, you know, my feeling is Peter is doing, I don't know, how do we say this every year? He's doing something nobody else is doing, which is really making people aware. And so right. giving, giving him 10 minutes on the agenda to remind us of the importance of the issue, hit the real high points. I think it's completely worth it. And, and he deserves that for the, for the, the awareness that he raises around the invasives. And yeah, mm -hmm. and we also have the other people that, Absolutely. that don't agree. So we have to make sure we allow comment period for them. So, okay. Yep, yep um, I agree with that on both sides, 10 minutes each. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. No, All right, a couple, about I think Rick is trying to talk. Oh, um, sorry, Rick. Can you, hear me, can you hear me now? Is that any better? Sorry. Not a lot better, but a little. Should we ask him to put recommended timelines together for any of this? You know, for, you know, as it relates back to some of the knowing price issues, because he wants us not to know if he can dig up a lot of, you know, to dig yeah. out some of these the invasions. You mean a, a timeline that the road crew could use for timing of That's when things right. of when things could be cut? When it would he's, be he's, when he's mostly into that. he's mostly into chervil. I get that, but that's a pretty big invasion. So yeah, but he's any, okay. Go ahead. No, his his thing is not. So we've been on Alfred about cutting it earlier before it flowers. Right. And and Peter's experiment is to pull it, cut. pull right. it, not cut it. Rick, can you use the chat? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Other other nights, it's, your audio has been really excellent. Tonight, it's terrible. Just type chat, and then we can read out your. Um, but no, uh, Denise, I like the I like the idea that you were raising that we let people know that we've got you know ten minutes for each point of view and that and that's it 10 minutes but he's going to be and he's going to be looking for us to make a decision about whether he can put up his signs again so we have to allow time for the board to digest and i mean we've all heard it before rick hasn't but we've right. all heard it before so i'm assuming we can make a decision relatively quickly but we don't have to make it that night, though, right? If we have him on the twenty sixth, we're we're. But he's he was he's looking to put those signs up now. Oh, he wants to put the signs yeah. up now. Yeah, but we have a couple of other big things. Um, we have the North Callis Memorial Hall Association looking. They've met with the Conservation Commission, and the Conservation Commission has looked at their interim management plan and made some suggested changes and Rowan has done the suggested changes. So I'm looking <coughs> for the 26th 
because they want to start construction. Um, you know, the beginning of this season here. And they want part of the deal with Memorial Hall, North Cal's Memorial Hall Association, is that we committed $50,000 from the conservation fund to be released to them for work. But we did it so that I think it's like over three years or two years to release the funds. But we need to also approve the internal management plan. So I can see this discussion taking a while. Um, and that would need to, hopefully we could do that on the 26th as well. And then we have also, and these are a couple of big things that are the local hazard mitigation plan and the local emergency management plan. Um, Grace Vinson from Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission um, would be coming to the board to review those updated documents. And I can see that <coughs> also probably taking at least a half an hour for both, maybe a little 45 minutes. For the, for Memorial Hall? I'm thinking a half an hour for Memorial Hall and then half an hour to 45 minutes for the local hazard mitigation plan and the local emergency management plan. And yes. the reason is because we have to get those adopted by Although Nick, Nick said we were late last year with the local emergency management plan and nothing, we didn't get like negative points or anything, but. <clears throat> is that the one that's, it's called LH? Is it like local hazard? Those are they're two separate documents. Okay. The local hazard mitigation plan um, is things that could happen in town if there was a flood or a hurricane or some bizarre tornado or something like that these can be these can be important for you know fema for funding yeah fema funding right. so we should try to meet these if we can these prepared documents uh, i've seen them so we can i think these are these, these are both things that lend themselves to and there may not be time this year but um, even the fact that we're saying, okay, half an hour, um, consideration and approval of, of North Cal's Memorial Hall Association interim management plan and release of CC funds is it is Denise are the action are the specific action items that one we approve the interim management plan and two we release their request for funds. That's what if they were coming. That's that's what that's what that's what it would be. And so if they were going to come in and ask for a motion and we were just going to say yes, yes, that's a five minute thing. So right, but I think I think that the board I, I get yeah, I get no, I get that it wouldn't be. I'm just like it's that it is it's that crisp and clear. We don't have to discuss we don't have to and I, and we should discuss it. I'm not saying that. I'm just it's really clear what they want. That's all. You know how sometimes people aren't really clear what they want? Well, I've made them clear that if we're going to, you know, that if we're going to talk about the interim management plan, and I will get the latest version from Roe and, and send it to everybody, but it's our responsibility to have reviewed that document ahead of the meeting and be prepared if we have any questions um, and maybe even send the questions ahead of time so that they're prepared with an answer. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can decide if we're okay with that and I keep there this the letter that we did that was dated March 10th 2018 I have that out all the time because it specifically says what they needed to do how we would release the funds so that letter I'll have Katie put it in the folder again but that letter has been sent to everybody probably at least six or seven times and I um, just so everybody's clear and you know what Rowan and Conservation Commission and whatnot. So, so and so the conversation you're having with them is also around being prepared. Does it does it does it become that they are basically going to be or could be presenting around that letter? Okay, select board. Um, here's our plan. Here's how we respond to that letter. 
does that kind of frame? Yeah, because they've already been to the Conservation Commission. I sent them there first okay. because the Conservation Commission needed to review the interim management plan as well. So rather than taking up our time to do it with, with the Conservation Commission and have to do it twice, I sent them to the Conservation Commission first. They reviewed it, made some suggested changes, which Stephanie or somebody on the CC can explain. <coughs> And then we can have reviewed that version, see if we have any questions, look at the letter and see if we're ready to release the funds. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And and if we tell them that there's if that that that's there's we have half an hour on the agenda and we know that too. Um if we're all invited to advance questions, I mean we don't need an invitation, but maybe reminded. Yeah. Send questions in advance focus on that letter and the parameters we put on the funds to begin with. Um, read through the management plan that we're gonna have in advance. Yep. And then we're going, and these are the two things that they're asking for, boom and boom, half an hour done. Yep. So anyways, that's kind of some bigger agenda items that I want us to, once we, if, once we get those out of the way, that'll clear up um getting those items done because they've been waiting for us to take this up but i wanted to wait till they went to the conservation commission so yeah i think that's good denise on the night that on the, the 26th um because there's so much that's big i think it's a good time to to well you did this tonight like 8 30 consideration of central vermont um msp like literally tie those half hour items to one line with half an hour. So that's what they're seeing too. You know what I mean? You mean like I'm like I like I did tonight. Yeah. Well like you did yeah like you did for the for the like you did for the so Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District thing where it's only one item yep. at 8 30 and it's half an hour. Well they'll be half and that's it. It's not like half an hour with three things. Yep. Because then everybody thinks they get to be 27 minutes. Right. I like, yeah, okay. I, I really like that we're doing this. I like that we're thinking about how long. So that one was half an hour. And then did we end up saying that the turbul is going to be half an hour? You know, if, if we don't plan appropriately. Um, and then don't forget, we have Ruben. And Ruben. So that's really the three items for that night, right? Well, there's, that's four items, Ruben. North Calais Memorial Hall, and then the LHMP and LEOP. I don't think the LEOP will take long because that's just basically, Nick's been plugging in names into like this document that he has, um, which I'll get from him and we can put it in the folder so everybody can review it ahead of time. Yeah, it's a very basic stock. It's, yeah. not, it's a real minimal. There can be a lot more, but this is this meets the requirement. Yeah, and we've had a group working on the local hazard mm -hmm. mitigation plan that we put a lot of time and effort into, and that'll be ready for folks to review ahead of time. So it's almost nine o'clock. Um, maybe we could get a jump start on the minutes um on the 19th because we That's wanted because we wanted john to look at those minutes of march 22nd or something like that those ones that we wanted him to look at yep <coughs> um i think i'm all it, caught i think i'm all caught up so rick yeah. have you been through all the minutes what we oh, try no, to do i haven't gotten through all of them yet i'll do that later. yeah okay. we try to go through and like put in comments <laughs> Put in comments or use a suggestion to make the actual to make edits. You know that difference between editing and suggesting. Um, and then, yeah, if we've all done that, then we can make pretty quick work of them. Wait, let and, me, I, haven't, I haven't done this yet. So, do we? So, Katie, post, she posts a minute on in our in our folder, or does she? Yeah, husband? Rick, and I can we, I can I can have a phone call with you because it's so hard to understand you tonight. And okay, show you and right. direct you and direct you to where they are, and how to how to do it because it's taken me a while to 
figure out the difference between editing and suggesting and comments. So I can help you with that. Well, do we just do it in track changes? I mean, I forget. <laughs> no, it's not track changes. It's a Google document. Oh, so let me let's doc. have a, let me let's okay. have a call, Rick, instead of taking up that's time good. tonight, yep, and I'll fine. walk you through it. My pro my pro tip is when you're making a comment, don't forget to click comment when you're done. Yeah, you can put okay. a lot of time into a comment, and it's the one thing Google doesn't save if you just leave. Yeah. Yep. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, so I'll we'll have a conversation because if I can teach you how to do it, that means I know how to do it. That That's is right, good. Denise. Well done. Um, all right, and so we're going to meet on the nineteenth. And did we have anything under other business, old business, new business? Yeah, I have some new business. Um, but before I get there, I need to let you know that I. I'm not positive I'll be able to meet on the 19th. Um, hopefully I, I will be able to, but if if I can't, I'll let you know in advance. Okay. And uh, as far as new business, I'll just uh, cut straight to the chase um, and let the board know that it's my intent to resign my position from the board. Effective. Uh, basically effective immediately. This will allow the board an opportunity to um, get someone on the ballot. Uh, it allows you to coincide um, finding a replacement um, should you choose to do it that way in conjunction with the special election that's coming up. And I will also hold out the option for the board if they're interested um, that I would be willing to do as Judy has done and uh, help with the transition by um, if you wanted to appoint me on a temporary basis to fill the position up until the time the election's held. Okay. So, you're, so you're effective tonight, you're, you are stepping away from the board, but you're willing to consider being temporarily appointed as, as, as we've done with Judy, an interim appointment? Yes. That's, That's interesting. Great. We didn't process the question around select board. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm really heartbroken and sad that you're going to be leaving. You've been such a huge asset, hardworking, reliable, honest, um, trustworthy. I mean, I just can't say enough good things about you as a board member, Cliff. I'm really I am personally going to miss you very much, and I think everybody else will as well. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks for that, Denise. It was not an easy decision, but um, I just feel going forward, I'm not sure I'm going to be in a position to, to give all the commitment that it requires to, to give the voters what they, what they voted for. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. All right. That, Sounds really hard, Cliff. Yeah. yeah, I think it was probably very um, heart wrenching for you to come to this decision. Indeed. All right. Well, on that note. Um, if, yeah, I, I just want to echo everything Denise said, though. I'm still kind of taking it in. So that's a bit of a shock. Yeah. 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 Well, well we'll miss you. Yeah, we're not done saying enough good things about you, so. Come back next week. We'll yeah, see. we'll come back. We'll just some say more. some more. Okay. All right. Um, like I say, I'm not sure if I'm going to be available on the 19th, but if I'm up for it, I will definitely be there. Okay, great. Well, you, on that unhappy that. note, would somebody like to make a motion to adjourn? So move. So move. And we're, is, we're, are we at 7 o'clock next week? Yeah, I think seven o'clock is good if we're going to do a special meeting, give everybody a little break. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Great meeting. Good teamwork. Thank you very much. What if I will pick up those, uh, I'll pick those up maybe at midday at lunch. Is that all right? Okay. The board that sounds good. Uh, yep. They'll any... be on the passenger side, black Toyota Tundra. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Good night, everyone. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night. Yeah. Sure. Thank you.